Now look, there's been known cases of updates causing slowdowns in your performance. Sometimes these updates are permanent. If they're trying to patch a security flaw or something like that, and they needs to be there, then we just eat it and accept it. Other times the updates are accidental, not the updates, the consequences of the updates, the performance degradation that happens. And then those updates are either rolled back or patched over. Now that uh, Sequoia is out for Mac OS, I want to see if updating to Sequoia from Sonoma will have any effects. Something I've never actually tried before. So I'm really curious to find out what happens. I got a couple of tests here, a Python test, matrix multiplication. I'm going to take a look at the performance of some tools that I use, like VS Code, for example, the startup performance to see if that gets affected. I've got an Xcode build and a C++ program to run. And hopefully a couple of those tasks, a compiled single core program, a compiled multi-core program, and the compilation of a program and an interpreted program will give us kind of an idea of uh, what happens from one operating system, Sonoma, to another one. Sequoia. And since I'm on this screen, I might as well show you the startup numbers I'm getting for VS Code opening up this particular project here. It's just my machine test project that I keep on GitHub. It looks like from start to finish, it takes about three seconds, almost three seconds exactly. So I'm counting the total time minus the idle time here. That's the milliseconds, pretty much exactly three seconds. I'll show you how I do this. I open up my VS Code project, I press F1 and then toggle developer tools. This opens up developer tools, you can go to the performance tab and do a recording and then once it's recording you do a reload window when it's done you're pretty sure it's done now we can stop it and this will do the analysis and tell us how long that took and actually this one's a little bit less you can clear it then and do the recording again if you want to take one more measurement which i do just to get an average and there we are and that's the startup time of VS Code, a pretty popular code editor. Now, let's check out how matrix multiplication is going to work. And I'm going to time the program and that's run. It's going to do um, 16,000 square matrices. Let's go. Now, while this is running, you can definitely see that things are happening. It's running on uh, a few cores, four cores. There's a total of eight cores on this machine, four efficiency and four performance. So it's probably just kind of switching around between them somehow, whatever strategy it's using. From the history graph, it definitely looks like it's utilizing all of them. Uh, but from the percentage here, looks like we're only hitting about four cores here. This is an intense calculation. So perhaps it's running only on the performance cores and it's done at two minutes. We're getting such nice round numbers today. I also have a sorting algorithm here done in C++. One is gonna execute only on one core. That's this one. And then I got another one that executes on all the cores. Ah. Uh. Not a round number, but it's pretty close. Two minutes, 59 seconds for that single core operation. Let's do the other one, the multiple core one. Oh, oh my bad. That was the multi-core C++ program. The single core was sorting 10 million. The multi-core one is sorting 100 million. You're kidding me. You're done. It's doing 10 times more work, but it finished this fast. That's, that's crazy. That's wild. Okay, I can run it again to make sure... Let's take a look at the history chart here. Make sure everything's running on activity monitor. Yeah, there it is. All the cores are being used and it's about 15.4, 15.7 seconds to sort 100 million integers using all the cores. Pretty cool. This is the Ugreen Nexode power bank. 20,000 milliamp hours, 130 watts. It's compact, it's lightweight, and it's powerful. Designed with a slim columnar shape, it's easy to carry without adding bulk. Perfect for commuting or travel. With 100 watts of super fast charging, this power bank can charge a MacBook Pro 16 inch to 43% or an iPhone 15 to 60% in just 30 minutes. Multiple ports allow simultaneous charging of several devices, including laptops. The TFT smart display provides real time data like battery level, charge time, and power output, giving you full visibility of your device's status. With 20,000 milliamp hours of capacity, it's airline approved and capable of charging an iPhone 15 up to four times, making it ideal for long trips. Ugreen's full lineup offers solutions for every power need. From small daily charges to high capacity power banks, they've got you covered. Check out the Ugreen Nexode power bank. 20,000 milliamp hours, 130 watts, your portable high performance power our solution. There's one more popular test called Xcode Benchmark, and this is a project that has over 70 popular dependencies. Oh, a framework that includes 76 popular CocoaPod libraries and their dependencies. So there's a lot of stuff to build 
together. And it doesn't take as long as something like WebKit, but it's a good representation of how the processor and the software can handle such a task. Usually I use this to test processor differences between M2, M3, and hopefully soon M4. So stay tuned for that. All right, that finished in 192 seconds. Now, one thing I'm not 100% sure yet is if this will run on the new Mac OS Sonoma with Xcode 16, because it doesn't look like there's Xcode 16 mentioned in this repository by Dev Yeremenka, uh, the one that created this test initially. So hopefully it'll work, we'll see in a moment. I mean, it'll be a while for me because I need to update the OS, I need to run all these things, but it'll be very quick for you. Let's blow it away. General software update, Sequoia, upgrade now, agree, password. Notice I'm not doing this on my main machine. It's my daily driver M2 Max MacBook Pro because, well, it's always good to do risky things like this on a separate computer, or if you don't have that, then you can use something like Parallels to virtualize Mac OS and see if your stuff runs on it on the new version. This single core task is sorting 100 million, 100 million integers <laughs> randomly. And uh, it's taking up one core, you can see it on here, even though it's jumping between the cores, it's really only running on one. See, right now it's on Core 6. Hello, Core 6. What's it feel like having to run this all by yourself? Oh, no, no, Core 7 now helps out. Hey, you get some help, Core 6. Core 7 to the rescue. What am I doing? Oh my God, I'm, I'm talking to the processors. It's done. <laughs> I got Sequoia. I don't know, it's not that exciting. It's just a new operating system, chill. I do like the trees. The tree background is cool. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna start with our Python example and let's time it. Listen, I know a lot of you missed the Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger will be back, okay? But right now it's only one computer. So what do you expect me to use just one finger? <laughs> fine, fine, I'll do it. Just because you just said yes in the comments, I know, and I'll do it. Hold on, 51 seconds? 53, yeah, 16,000 by 16,000? Matrix multiplication took 53.9 seconds. That's like two times faster. That's crazy, right? Am I crazy? Python version, just because I know some of you are gonna ask, I'm using 3.11.9, 3.11.9. And in case you wanna recreate this, this is the version of NumPy that's not compiled using the Accelerate framework. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Basically, this is the version of NumPy that's installed using pip and it's not compiled using Accelerate framework on Apple Silicon, which could be faster. I have a video on that for members, how to set that up and everything. Incidentally, if you wanna become a member of the channel, there's a join button right down below. There's extra videos, you get little icons next to your name, and there's cool little emojis you can use. I gotta run this again, that's that's crazy. If it takes half the time to run this, that's a big difference, that's significant, and that's not something I expected at all. I expected maybe there's gonna be some difference, maybe it's actually gonna be slower, but not two times faster. Same machine, all the projects are the same, I didn't change any of the data, any of the files, just the OS. Well, okay then, 34.9 seconds this time around. What is going on? If anybody knows why this is happening, please leave a comment down below. I'm sure people would love to know. Now, if we take a look at what's going on on the CPU side, we are using about one core there and it's settled around 34 to 35 seconds. Pretty significant boost. Now let's take a look at the performance of VS Code itself. DevTools, performance, record, and reload. Okay, about the same, 2.9 seconds for this one, just to make sure I'm gonna redo it. We're in the same ballpark, folks, so not much of a difference as far as opening up an Electron-based app, which is probably gonna be how your JavaScript applications are going to behave locally as well, because this is just a JavaScript app. Now, let's take a look at doing a C++ program here. What's the actual algorithm? I forgot already. We're using quicksort. And for the single core operation, we're doing 10 million random integers, and it is running on one core. Let's see what happens. Two based is time oh, uh, sorry. Um, this is uh, two minutes and 59 seconds. W wait a minute. Wait, two minutes and 59 seconds is exactly what we had last time. Exactly the same. Two minutes, 59 seconds, 0.25. Here it's two minutes, 59 seconds, 0.74. I'm pointing at the video of what I recorded my previous test over there, in case you're wondering. It's over there, so I can compare the results. I don't remember these things. I don't have the finished video in front of me. You guys do. You're the ones that can rewind and rewatch parts of this. Anyway, exactly the same results here. Let's do the mult. And just to remind you, the previous result was 15.15 seconds. So is this going to be 15, uh, it's 15 seconds. Yeah, a little bit 
a little bit faster, but within the ballpark. But the fact that it's not slower is great. If anything, there is a minuscule improvement. Just just a little bit, like in the hundreds of a second improvement for the two runs that I did there. Now, one final test. I'm actually not even sure if this is gonna work or not. This is the Xcode benchmark. Let's do it. Seems to be running. <laughs> uh we have we have fun around here don't we hey this job can get pretty boring okay testing these things on different computers i gotta find ways to entertain myself all right whoa <laughs> this is not just within the margin of error this is actually better folks 173 seconds for xcode benchmark which shaves 20 seconds from the previous result not different hardware just different operating system they've definitely done some improvements and it's not even the newer version of xcode i'm running xcode 15.4 here which is the version that came out in may before sequoia was out so this is kind of a surprise to me and uh a welcome surprise i think i might take the plunge and update my nice fields to the nice trees i'm pretty excited about what's coming down the line with the m4 series macbook pros and hopefully some new devices i don't know what's gonna happen but i'm really excited to see those coming up soon there's an october event coming up and if you're not yet subscribed go ahead and subscribe i'm gonna get some machines in here and test them out too anyway thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one